Bible says God came and he looked for a man who would stand in the gap, but he could not find any. Well, I know he's got a bunch of people right here, men and women, who are standing in the gap, doing what we've been asked to do. Amen? Hey, you know what? I, I did want to finish early, and I know that um, we are early, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. I know my friend Mike is giving a whole prophecy update on this psalm, but would you guys turn to Psalm 82? I just want to talk a little bit more about what I think may be taking place. Now, you've got people who will, Psalm 83, excuse me, you have people who will totally disagree with me. And that's okay. And I'm not saying, thus saith the Lord. And I know some of the problems that some of the, the pastors that disagree with me on this is that we try to find ways to put all the current event into prophecy and they not necessarily line up. And then we just kind of look foolish. And so I don't want to do that. But boy, this psalm to me is, ex- is exciting and extremely interesting. Look at verse 1. By the way, it says a psalm of Asaph. You guys know that Chronicles calls Asaph a prophet, a seer. He says, do not be silent, O God. Do not hold your peace and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make atonement. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have come. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. (laughs) Do you know that's what the enemies of Israel are saying right now? That the name of Israel may be remembered no more. They don't want Israel there. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. And then he goes on and talks from verses 6 to verse 12 about the nations that are all lined up there. We'll talk about those nations in just a minute. They're actually conspiring together to say, verse 12, look at verse 12. This is what they're conspiring. Let us take for ourselves the pasture of God's possession. Do you realize the land of Israel belongs to God? Well, the whole earth does technically, but that's his land, that's his property. Verse 13, oh my God, make them like a world dust, a world whirling dust, like the chaff before the wind. This is the prayer that the prophet prays. As the fire burns the wood, And as the flames set the mountains on fire, so pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with your storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name, O Lord. Listen, not for destruction, for destruction's sake. We don't pray for the Palestinians or the Arabs, whatever you want to call them, destruction for destruction's sake. We want them to see the face of God. We want them to hear the name of God and get saved. Let them be confounded and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be put to shame and perish that they may know that you whose name alone is the Lord are the most high over the earth. Wouldn't that be glorious if all of a sudden Hamas just renounced its Hamasness, its violence, and they all got saved? That's what we want. But evil does need to be dealt with. So Israel does have a right to defend itself and to defend itself from the evil that has taken place from them. So look, I am of the position that there are three conflicts conflicts left in Israel's history. Now, a lot of pastors in Calvary Chapel will ex- immediately will go to Ezekiel 38 and 39 at this point. But as I studied Psalm 82, 83, I don't know why I keep saying 82, I see that there's two different types of people coming against them versus Ezekiel 38 and 39. You see, this first major conflict that I think has to take place is with who? The surrounding people groups bordering Israel. Psalm 83, Zechariah 12, Isaiah 11. The goal is to seek and control the land. Zechariah 12, verses 2 through 8. The duration... This war started in 1948, the moment they became a a, a land again. Several conflicts. The first one right when they moved in, what, then 67 to 69, then 73. You guys realize that Israel kept trying to make peace 
at every cost. They even captured the Temple Mount at one time and they gave it back to the Arabs so that they could control it just to try to appease and make, make, uh, make peace. The Gaza Strip, they had, they gave it back to the Arabs, the Palestinians, what, in 2005, six or seven, I can't remember exactly when. And I'm just giving you some brief history off the top of my head. Not, don't hold me on any of these dates, okay? But they are not happy with that because they want the whole thing. They don't want any, any they, don't, they, they call them squatters. They call them people who are in the wrong place. And they therefore can justify killing innocent children because they're in the land that they don't belong to, that it's not theirs. The victory in this war will come by a powerful IDF military. And you can look at the destruction of Gaza, Syria, and Jordan, Zechariah chapter 12, Isaiah 11. You could look at the destruction of Syria in Isaiah 17. You can actually look at the destruction of Egypt in Isaiah 19 and Jordan in Zephaniah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Obadiah. Do you guys know all these nations right now are aligning themselves against Israel at this very moment. Jordan has been on the sidelines, not yet. But all these other nations. Do you guys realize Ergodon in Turkey told Bibi today, you will be killed. You will be killed. Egypt, I saw late before I came here, is actually warning Israel on their response. Egypt has a peace treaty with Egypt, I mean, uh, Israel for how long? When was that peace treaty signed? I mean, like in the 70s or early 80s or something. I can't remember what it was. I think it was the 70s. But now they're rearing their ugly head. So this first conflict, Psalm 83, which I believe is prophetic, whether it's this taking place now or it's going to take place in the future, I don't know, is a religious war. And it's a war for the land. Do we have that first map? No, that's a, go to the second map. That's the next map. All right, here. These are all the names that are listed in chapter uh, 83, verses 5 through 11. These are all of them. And this is where they're located. I mean, this is the Egyptians right here. This is the, this is the Philistine. This is where Gaza Strip is, the Philistines. And you can see all these nations right now, Ammon, uh, Moab, these are all nations that are coming against Israel. Let me go to my little cheat sheet here. Psalm 83, the tents of Edom is the Palestinians in the South Jordan. The Ishmaelites and the Saudis are Ishmael and the father of the Arabs. Moab, the Palestinians and the central Jordanians. The Hagarites are the Egyptians. Hagar is the um, um, matriarch of Egypt. Gibel uh, is uh, Hezbollah in the north Lebanese. By the way, they're receiving Israel right now uh, Amir Safadi reported tonight before he was trying to go to sleep that they are sending drones like crazy across the northern border. They have also received uh, bombs from uh, missiles from Syria. Okay? Amen is the Palestinians and the North Jordanians. Amalek is the Arabs in the, in the, in the Sinai area. The Philistus is the, is the Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Tyre is Hezbollah in the southern Lebanese. Assyria is, is, um, is, uh, Assyria is the Syrians and northern Iraqis. Did you know? You see this thing heating up. You see Egypt warning. You see Ergodon threatening Benjamin Netanyahu. And you see Assyria coming in with their weapons. You and I could quite possibly go to bed tonight. And Isaiah 17 says, we see this conflict taking place. And the next morning we wake up and Syria has been annihilated. It's off the face of the map. Isaiah 17, you can read it for yourself. Is this indeed the conflict that we're watching right now, or is this just another conflict in the long line of conflicts that have already happened and will continue to happen? I'm not going to, I don't know. I don't know. But now let's go to this other Ezekiel map, and we see the nations here, Rosh, Magog, uh, Meshach, Tubal, Persia, Gomer, um, Torgrama, Ethiopia, and Put. And we see Israel right here. And what this war is in Ezekiel 38 and 39, it spells it out very clear. It's a war for wealth. It's not a religious war. It is a war from wealth. And when this war takes place, it's going to be supernaturally annihilated by God. The enemies of God 
will be supernaturally annihilated and Israel will be just sitting there going, what the heck happened? We also see in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that there are unwalled villages. They're living safely. They are living there in peace. Has Israel lived in peace since 1948 till now? No. I think that's a huge piece in my opinion as I've studied this. It says in Ezekiel 38 and 39, they've been living at peace with no walls. There's nothing but walls and barriers throughout Israel because they're not living at peace. So then I look at Psalm 83, and no one, I'm telling you, no one knows what to do with it. Oh, it took place in Israel's history here. Or, you know, you, if you listen to some of the videos I sent out, Olivier Millick, who is an Israeli, most Israelis don't want to admit that this could be prophetic because it hurts the, the peace negotiation that's potentially taking place. Oh, yeah, by the way, God's told us that we're going to wipe you out and we're going to control the whole territory. Amir Safadi doesn't even want to admit that it was, it's still prophetic. He says, oh, no, that took place in 1948. That's exactly what he'll say. Listen, I don't know, but you guys can see these ancient nations. You can see Rosh's Russia, Magad, Central Asia, Meshach and Tubal or Turkey. Turkey, Ergodon is now a radical Islamic person. So far, he's been very uh, down the middle in regards to ruling there. He's not allowed extremists. He does have some extremists, but there's still a very secular culture. Persia is Iran. And you guys all know this, except for our president. Um, they funded Hezbollah in the north and Hamas in the south. I'm sorry. He came close in his conference today. He mentioned, you know, but he won't, he won't say that they've actually sponsored him. The whole world knows Iran has sponsored them. The Washington Post has reported it, but our president won't say anything. It just messes up with his narrative. It doesn't fit his lie. Kush, northern Sudan, Ethiopia, Put, Libya, Gomer is Turkey, Beth Tograma is Turkey, um, and possibly other nations as, as, as Iraq. Okay. I, again, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you um, with 100% certainty that Psalm 83 is what we're watching right now. I don't know. We could just be watching another conflict in the long line of conflict. But I'll tell you, because I'm sitting there thinking, I, I know this text. And when I heard Egypt was sending a warning to Israel, when I saw that Ergadon was threatening Bibi, and then I hear Syria, okay, when we, Syria and Lebanon weren't in, the, weren't in the battle. Now do we see the Jordanians join in? Do you know that Hamas has called for a national day of terror on Friday? All Islamic people are to create terror wherever they live, including here. We'll see if it happens. I don't know. But I know this, that there's a God in heaven who's sitting in his holy temple and let the earth be quiet. And I know this, that the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in that this world's going to somehow magically get better? No. Faith in that God is on the throne and he is good. And faith that my soul is secure in him. And I can take a deep breath and I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. I don't know about you guys, but I slept like a baby last night. I don't mind telling you this, that the this side of my pillow, it was so soaked because I was drooling so much. I mean, I was just like, I was sound asleep like a baby, you know what I mean? I was like, whoa, this is great. Until I, until I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry. TMI. It's all right. Hey, everyone has to go. <laughs> so don't worry, don't fret. Let's be watchmen on the wall, amen? Let's keep doing our job. That's all we're required about. That's it. Warn the world, tell them Jesus loves them, tell them that they're sinners, they need a savior. That's our job. We love you, we're praying for you. We're not your enemies, we're actually trying to save you and rescue you. I know it may not seem like that right now, but guess what, that's what it is. Sometimes when we're trying to be out in the world, it's like trying to save a drowning person. You ever remember taking first aid or, you know, I don't know, for some reason I was in the Boy Scouts and I remember if you ever go into a drowning person, they said don't approach them. 
throw a ring, throw a stick, throw something because they are panicking and they will actually take you down. And I was actually told you may actually have to knock them out to save them. I think, well, this is kind of radical. I hope there's always a ring around, you know, just... <laughs> but you see, that's somehow the way the world we react when we're trying to save them is they, are, they will pull you down. They will try to do everything they can because they, they're lost. They don't know. They don't realize. And by the way, I got to tell you, now is a great opportunity because I don't know. I never even knew who Joe Rogan was. How many of you guys have heard of Joe Rogan? Okay, I'm not alone. Okay, it's like four of you. Okay, we were in Texas and my son said, hey, dad, you, you know, do you ever listen to Joe Rogan's podcast? I go, Joe who? You know, I didn't even know who he was. He goes, I'm surprised you didn't know who he is. And he's he going on and on. I didn't know who he is, but I was watching a podcast today because I've been reading the news a lot more today because of what's going on. And he is literally freaking out. He is like, what in the world is going on? Should we, should we buy some property, dig a hole, store some food? And here's me. The whole right side of my pillow was just all soaking wet. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have a care in the world, man. Because I got Jesus and I got his word. But this is an opportunity because people are, people are worried. Our, our president has given away almost all of our reserves to try to keep the gas prices down. Meanwhile, he lets everybody else mine for oil. You know, I misspoke on Sunday. Iran has made billions of dollars in all of the oil they have sold. Not millions, billions. I think, I don't know how many gallons we have left, but 17, I don't remember how many gallons it was. But, you know, I know that some people on the news were like freaking out about that because we've given away so much of our reserves. So remember, the just shall live by faith, and there's a God in heaven who's sitting in his temple on his throne and the earth needs to just be quiet. And that's our hope. And our hope is in him. And I'm excited. I don't know about you guys. I'm watching the news. I'm waiting. Okay, what's the next piece of the line? What's the next piece going to fall into place? And I'm like, well, I don't want anybody getting killed. Please don't misunderstand this. But if Psalm 83 actually took place right now in the next few weeks, do you realize that would be like one of those moments where you just stood back and you went, whoa. Do you know there was Bible teachers back in the day before Israel became a nation that were profiling? Hey, the word of God tells us that they're going to be a nation again. All kinds of Bible teachers taking place. Could you imagine if they actually lived during that day when it actually became a nation again? You'd be sitting there thinking, whoa, this is really cool. One Bible teacher I know says, I'm looking forward to my next trip on uh, Israel to go to Gaza. <laughs> I won't go that far. Well, I guess I just did. Um, yeah, so I don't get, I mean, look, God's in control. He's got this. Father, thank you for you, and thank you for your word, and Lord, thank you for your promises, Lord, and thank you that there is a God. You are in heaven, that you are sovereign, and that you are ruling over the affairs of man. And I'm comforted by the fact that not even a dove falls to the ground, not even a bird falls to the ground, and, and you know it, Lord. You know. You know everything that's taken place. You know every thought I have, every thought my brothers and sisters have. And Lord, you're just your 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 love and your grace and all your thoughts towards us are are ones of wanting to bless and, and, and to prosper us, not in a material way, but in a way that is spiritual in you. And so Lord, we have nothing to fear. We can go to, to bed tonight and go sound asleep and not have to worry about a thing. And we can just enjoy our time together with you and our time together with people here. And so, Lord, help us to be a watchman providing hope for this lost world. We love you, Lord, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand.
going to read this in Habakkuk 3.18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on, the, on, on my high hills. Who's our strength? It ain't me. Glory, amen. All right, baptism Sunday. That's exciting. <laughs> She's, I'm sorry, I put, I put fresh. I didn't mean to call attention to you. But I'm excited. This is exciting. So don't forget that. And the men's conference Friday and Saturday. God bless you guys.